All right, everybody, thanks for checking out this video. Today you are going to learn what I think is the best type of projector screen for both indoor and outdoor use. We'll start off by looking at what seems like a super simple solution, projector screen paint. Just paint your wall and in an instant you have a movie screen. Well, the first thing you have to realize is this type of screen can actually take several days to complete. That's because it typically requires several layers of paint and each layer must dry before applying the next layer. And you'll also need a large empty wall space which isn't always available. I've personally tested the Goose Systems paint to other screen materials and it does produce a very nice image, but projector screen paint is not cheap. Here are the prices for the popular Screen Goo basic white paint. As you can see, it's $129 for enough paint to make a 5x9 or 120 inch diagonal projector screen. And here's another popular projector screen paint available on Amazon, $189 per gallon. So next we'll take a look at the inflatable projector screen. I have to admit this one definitely wins on the cool factor, but as you'll see, it's not the most functional. First off, we have to mention the somewhat deceptive advertising here. As you can see, this screen is not actually 14 feet. They're measuring the borders of the screen. The actual screen size is probably about 10 feet. And the other thing to mention is that you'll have to be running an air pump, which requires constant power to keep the screen inflated. Now you might be thinking, well, I need power anyway to run the projector, but that's not necessarily true. At the end of this video, I will suggest a nice portable projector with great sound that runs on its built-in battery for up to three hours, so stick around for that. So anyway, as far as the pump goes, you're going to be hearing the constant hum of it during your entire movie. You'll also need enough room to stretch out the ropes in order to secure the screen so it doesn't blow away if there's a big gust of wind. And the final downside to this type of screen is the actual screen material itself. It's usually a plastic PVC type material that does not typically produce a flat screen. Here's a few images that I grabbed right off Amazon. These were posted by the people who reviewed this type of screen. And the final image is the worst of all. Yuck. The third type of screen we're going to look at is the ever so popular blackout material. If you're going to use blackout cloth it requires you to build a fixed frame. So you'll need a nice big area to build that. You'll have to get your tools out and run to the store to buy the materials. And once your frame is built the blackout material has to be carefully and evenly stretched as it's stapled to the frame. If you don't do this right you're going to have uh, wrinkles and waves in your uh, screen. And finally, you will need a large empty wall space in order to hang the screen, and you won't be moving this thing. And I saved the best for last. This is my favorite screen by far, the portable spandex projector screen. The spandex projector screen has many advantages over every other type of screen. First of all, it's very lightweight and ultra-portable. You can fold it up and put it in a bag, as you see here. And because it's so easy to put up and take down, you can use it for both indoor and outdoor use very easily. For outdoor use, it can be attached to a backdrop stand in minutes using a few spring clamps and bungee cords. So here you'll see how easy this thing is to set up if you're using a backdrop stand. This is a heavy-duty backdrop stand. The poles are a little bit thicker than a lighter-duty one. I like this kind because if you do get a little gust of wind, it's not going to tip over as easily and uh, you set it up this quickly and you raise this up to about six feet high I'd say and you take the screen and attach the two ends with uh, the spring clamps here and once you have those then you just slide it out to stretch the screen and use three more spring, spring clamps to uh, secure the top and raise it to the height you want and finally you take the two one foot bungee cords and attach the bottom and it's that easy. Okay as cool as that is now check this out this is one of my favorite things about this screen here I have a AXA P7 projector and I'm projecting onto the front of the screen and if I pick this up and walk behind the screen you're going to see that the image can also be projected from behind the screen this is called backlight capable with a projector behind the screen you can actually walk in front of the screen and you won't cast any shadows and block the image by walking in front of the projector. Now as easy as it is to put up for outdoor use it goes up even faster if you want to use it indoors. You just screw five small nearly invisible hooks into your ceiling and once you have that done you can easily put the screen up in less than a minute. Right here we got it halfway up already. 
and those are the five hooks and finally you just attach two bungees to the bottom corners and you have a 10 foot projector screen so that was the white screen you saw being hung there and this I'm projecting on the front of that white screen and this also is capable of uh, backlight and if we pick up our camera we can walk behind the screen and you'll see you get the same feature as with the silver screen the three other type of screens we looked at cannot do this and they can also not be moved the inflatable can be but you can't use it indoors because it's too tall alright so let's do a recap here our projector screen paint on the positive side the image quality tends to be very good for the inflatable projector screen, the image quality is lower because the screens are typically fairly wrinkled. And the blackout material, the image quality is good. And finally, the spandex projector screen, you get a very good image quality. Next, we'll compare the price. Uh, $130 to $190 for the projector screen paint. The inflatable projector screen is between $125 and $210, depending on the quality. Blackout material is about $55 plus the frame cost. And the spandex projector screen is around $70 and $50 for the backdrop stand if you want to use it outdoors. Next we'll look at the construction time. It's about one full day for the projector screen paint because you have to let it dry between layers. About 30 minutes for the inflatable projector screen. And the blackout material, you have to build the frame and stretch the fabric, so that's at least four hours, if not more. And the spandex projector screen, as you saw, it's about one minute indoors and five minute outdoor if you're using the backdrop stand. And next we'll compare the portability. The projector screen paint, obviously not portable, requires an empty wall and it cannot be moved. The inflatable projector screen, uh, it can be moved, but it's too big for indoor use, and don't forget it requires the uh, power for the blower fan, which will be running during your entire movie. The blackout material, typically this is stretched onto a frame, which could be moved, but it's so big it just makes it too difficult and not worthwhile to try moving it. And the spandex projector screen, yes, it's very portable for both indoor and outdoor use. It doesn't require an empty wall space and one person can move this uh, within minutes all by themselves. And now let's take a look at that cool feature of rear projection. Projector screen paint, obviously no, you're painting it onto a wall. Uh, the inflatable projector screen, uh, not capable of rear projection. It would be fuzzy if you did. Uh, the blackout material, nope, it's blackout material, so the light cannot pass through it for rear projection. And the spandex projector screen, yes, capable of both front and rear projection. And one last thing to mention about the rear projection, if your projector and speakers are behind the screen, it is acoustically transparent, which the other screens aren't really, so it won't uh, muffle your sound at all. And the remote signal can pass right through the screen, so you can control the projector or whatever device you have behind the screen, because the signal from the remote control will just pass right through the screen and you'll be able to control your device. So hopefully you agree with me that the spandex projector screen wins this contest hands down and here is what the Amazon page to the outdoor silver screen looks like and this is what the white screen, uh, basically the indoor screen looks like. You can use either of these both out and indoor but uh, the choice is up to you. Now with all that being said here's one final word of caution. As with anything beware of low quality imitators. Here you can see how many sellers are offering basically the same cheap mass-produced cookie cutter screen made in China. And these are about half the price of the made in the USA screen that I showed you. The quickest and easiest way to uh, spot the knockoff version is that it has a black border around it. Now this black material doesn't have the same stretchability as the white spandex which causes wrinkles when you hang it. You'll notice the screen on the left doesn't have this black border and doesn't have the wrinkling problem. Here you can see the product images from the manufacturers on the top and the actual product image, what it looks like from uh, customer pictures on the bottom. And as you can see, the one with the black border does not hang very well. The next thing to note are the quality of the corners. The Made in the USA screen has nice clean corners and the Chinese import with the black borders are just rough and not very high quality. As you can see, the grommet is almost popping out in the top photo on the right there. And several of the reviews actually complained about that happening. 
And the biggest difference is in the quality of the fabric. Look how tight the weave is on the Made in the USA screen on the left compared to the cheap copy on the right. This is the reason the uh, higher quality screen costs twice as much. The loose weave of the cheaper screen uh, lets so much light pass through that you lose a lot of the color saturation and the image is not nearly as sharp. So those last couple of pictures I pulled right off the Amazon page and this next demonstration I filmed myself. This is the fabric from the cheaper $30 screen with the black border. You can see how uh, thin the material is. And here's the example of the higher priced uh, made in the USA screen. You can see how much thicker the material is and it's a lot smoother as well. So I think the last thing I need to mention about this is the higher quality screen, it comes with hooks and bungees, whereas the cheaper one, it comes with these plastic little tabs you stick on the wall. Now the advantage of having hooks that you actually screw into the ceiling allows you to hang it in front of things if you have a staircase or, or bookcases in the way. With the little plastic hooks they include with the cheaper screen, you pretty much have to stick it right to the wall, meaning you need an empty wall space, which is not always available. So to me, it seems like the manufacturer of the cheaper screen kind of misses the whole point of being able to hang this wherever you want. Now, I didn't forget, I promised you earlier I was going to recommend a good battery-powered outdoor projector screen, and here it is, the Nebula by Anchor Mars 2 Pro. Now you'll want to make sure you're getting the pro version of this projector. And the reason for this is because it's a newer projector with 500 lumen versus 300 lumen. So it's brighter, which uh, you'll need for outdoor use. Because a lot of times when you're projecting outside, you'll have the moonlight or other ambient light around. So you won't have total darkness. So you'll need a brighter projector to kind of overcome that. The other reason this is a great portable projector is the sound. It has great speakers in it. And finally, probably the number one reason is it has a three hour battery life. A lot of portable projectors will actually only have like a 90 minute battery life which uh, won't necessarily get you through uh, an entire movie. So for those reasons I like the Mars 2 Pro. Now it's not the smallest of the portable projectors and it doesn't necessarily have the best image quality. I would say the AXA P7 beats uh, the Mars projector in both those departments. It's smaller and has a better picture with a higher resolution. But the P7 only has a 90 minute battery life and the sound is not as good. So in full disclosure, I haven't actually tested the Mars 2 Pro, but it seems to be just a brighter version of the Mars Lite, which I have tested. And here's an actual image comparison of the Mars Lite versus the AXA P7. So the Mars 2 Pro should be noticeably brighter than the uh, middle image here of the Mars Lite. And as you can see, the AXA P7 does have a noticeably better image than the Mars Lite, but uh, once again, with the lower sound quality and much shorter battery life, the Mars projector is a better overall pick for outdoor use. And here we'll zoom in to compare the details of the image a bit more closely. Okay, I think that about wraps it up. I hope you found this video useful, and I put a link in the description to the two projector screens and the projector. Thanks for viewing.